A metal bar of length L rotates with angular velocity omega about a pivot at one end of the bar. A uniform magnetic field of magnitude B is perpendicular to the plane of rotation. What is the potential difference between the ends of the bar? Let's start off with a sketch of this conductor that is just a bar rotating in a uniform magnetic field. So here is our bar. We'll put the pivot point at this bottom end of the bar. And let's say this bar is rotating counterclockwise with an angular speed of omega. We're told that this bar is of length L and that there is a uniform magnetic field through which this bar is rotating. This uniform magnetic field is perpendicular to the plane of rotation. I'm going to indicate that this magnetic field is coming straight towards us out of the screen. That's signified by the sequence of dots that are uniformly spaced, indicating a uniform magnetic field coming towards us. Our goal is to find the potential difference established between the ends of the bar. Now, from what we've learned before, we know that a conductor moving through a uniform magnetic field, an electric field will be induced between its ends. We know that the magnitude of that induced electric field is equal to the product of the conductor's speed and the magnitude of the magnetic field through which that conductor is moving. Now, since this conductor is rotating with a certain angular velocity, what speed would we talk about? Because the speed at any point in the conductor is dependent on how far away we are from the pivot point. Now, from what we've learned in circular motion, we know the speed of a point on a circle is equal to the product of the distance that point is from the pivot point, which we'll call it r, and the angular speed of rotation. So depending on r, our speed is going to be different. Our speed is zero at the pivot point and a maximum value at the, at the end of the bar. Now, why this is important? Because we know that the charges in this bar will be induced to separate between positive and negative charges. Now, that separation is going to be based on the direction of the magnetic force that these charges experience. Now, magnetic force, remember, of a point charge is equal to the product of that charge and the cross product between the charge's velocity and the magnetic field. The magnetic force experienced by these charges will cause these charges to separate. And the separation will be in the direction of the magnetic force it experiences. So if we were to find the direction of the magnetic force on the positive charge, we would place the fingers of our right hand in the direction in which the positive charge's velocity is pointing. So at this instant, the positive charge's velocity is pointing perpendicular to the bar, and I'll indicate that with v. That's the direction of the velocity at this moment. So the fingers of our right hand will be in the direction of the velocity. We're going to then face the palm in the direction of the magnetic field, which is coming towards us. Once we do that, when we stick our thumb out, the direction our thumb is pointing is the direction of the magnetic force experienced by that positive charge. So let's do this with our right hand. So fingers of my right hand in the direction in which this charge is moving, which is straight away. 
palm facing towards the magnetic field. The magnetic field is coming towards us, so our palm is facing up. Our thumb points in the direction of the magnetic force acting on that positive charge. So for this problem, the magnetic force experienced by that positive charge is taking it to the end of the bar. Now, negative charges behaving opposite to positive charges, the negative charges will experience a magnetic force taking it towards the pivot point. So let's illustrate that separation. Positive charges will go to the end of the bar. The negative charges will go towards the pivot point. That charge separation establishes an electric field between the positive and the negative charges. And that electric field is pointing from the end of the bar towards the pivot point. And that the magnitude of that electric field is equal to the magnitude of the charge's velocity or the conductor's velocity in the magnetic field and the magne magnetic field itself. Now, this electric field is actually non-uniform. It's non-uniform because its value depends on how far away we are from the pivot point. Since the speed is equal to the product of the distance from the axis of rotation and the angular speed, we could say that the electric field is equal to the product of that distance from the axis of rotation, the angular speed, and the magnitude of the magnetic field. So notice the electric field varies with distance. The electric field is zero at the axis of rotation, and the electric field is a maximum value at the end of the bar. Now we need to know the electric field because our goal is to find the potential difference between the ends of this bar. And that potential difference is given by the negative of the line integral of the electric field. Okay, so line integral, well what line are we integrating along? Well let's integrate from low potential to high potential. The low potential end is the end in which the negative charges accumulate. I'll label that V naught. The high potential end is the end in which the positive charges accumulate. I'll label that V. So the difference between the two is delta V, the potential difference also called the motional EMF because it's the potential difference generated by the motion of this conductor through this magnetic field. So the line integral of the electric field, we have to establish the line or the path in which we are integrating. So we're going to integrate from low to high potential. So we'll say that that is in the direction of the radius. And let's look at a representative displacement differential in that direction. So that displacement differential I will call dr. And we're integrating the electric field um, along that path of integration. So the electric field is opposite the displacement differential at each point. And we should recognize that the angle between the electric field and the displacement differential is 180 degrees. So knowing that angle allows us to rewrite the line integral as equal to the magnitude of the electric field, the cosine of the angle between the electric field and the displacement differential, and the magnitude of the displacement differential. Now we're integrating along the length of the bar, so we will say we're integrating from 0 to L. Since we know that the angle between the electric field and the displacement differential is 180 degrees, that makes the cosine of 180 degrees is equal to 1, and what that means is that minus 1 
times the minus sign in front of our integral means that our potential difference is positive from 0 to L times the product of the magnitude of the electric field and the magnitude of the displacement differential. From what we've said previously, the electric field is equal to R omega B. Or in other words, the product of the distance we are from the axis of rotation, the angular speed, and the magnitude of the electric field, dr. Where that distance r, uh, if you just represent an arbitrary location in the bar, that corresponds to our distance r, and we are integrating r from 0 to l. When we integrate r from 0 to l, and recognizing that omega, the angular speed, and b, the magnetic field, are constants, we end up with 1 half r squared omega b evaluated from 0 to l. This means that the potential difference between the ends of the bar is equal to 1 half omega b l squared. So we have now found the motional EMF, the potential difference established between the ends of this bar that is rotating in this uniform magnetic field.